Hello everybody, my name is Will. Welcome back to Sprocket with Geometric Internals! It's here. It's done. We, we, it's arrived. Finally. You won't have this if you launch Sprocket right now. I bet more than one of you has just pressed the launch button and is like, where's my Geometric Internals? You gotta sign up to the beta in Steam. It's uh, right-click the game, properties, betas, uh, select 0.2 Geometric Internals. That is what you need to do. Uh, there is currently no uh, fighting AI tanks. There's no campaign missions. So this is going to be a little bit different to our normal type of video. Uh, but because this is Geometric Internals, and also because I've just come back from traveling, uh, I, <laughs> I'm going to do a video where basically you're just going to follow me through as I learn how to use this. And let's see how that goes. Okay, straight away, things look quite a lot different. You can see that when we're moving around, we can now like right click on all of these different parts they get this gray outline yeah currently we're in the uh non-freeform editor what's it even called <laughs> i forget what it's called um but there we go we've still got freeform here uh, and we can see there's a bunch of new buttons so this here is the new tool this is what i've been looking for so here you can create a hole in a face like so and as you can see it's done a bit of a messy job there but now we can make like turret basket holes okay so let's work out what we're going to be building uh i think i want to build something fairly um not too complex so this is new we can get our uh return rollers to be at an angle which is quite nice that's never been a feature before so i, I like that so by default, uh, these wheels are now sinking to the length of our hull. So if we go back and collect, this, sorry, collect, select the front of this hull and drag this back, I think it should somewhat sink up to the... Okay, maybe not. <laughs> okay, so uh, looks like shaping the hull is very similar. I've just got rid of the um, kind of overlapping fender sections here uh, and we're gonna put in a little bit of a more early war shape for this tank the front yeah this is gonna need a little bit of work so uh, let me just play around with this and i'll uh, join you in a second so there were big sections of this recording where i just wasn't speaking so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna speed these bits up and we're gonna have a little bit of time lapsing in between me talking and this is probably gonna be how a lot of these sprocket videos are gonna be during this kind of tumultuous early days of the geometric internals update uh so hopefully uh if you do enjoy this let me know in the comment section below but i'm hoping for you guys this will allow you to see a little bit more of this process without me having to be 110 percent talking all the time because that's going to take away from a little bit of my focus and a little bit of my uh like process that i go through when i'm designing these things so fingers crossed this is a good compromise for everyone and uh hopefully <laughs> we'll get a couple of my little insane tangents because i know some of you absolutely hate those and some of you absolutely love those so uh we'll get a little bit of everything for everyone uh, or maybe it'll just be the worst thing in the entire universe i don't know uh, but uh, all i know is this little speed up section is just about to end because i thought of something to say back in the past <laughs> Okay, so you join me. Uh, I'm just kind of uh, tweaking the rear end of my tank. I want to bring this in a little bit and have this uh, bit at the back be where I mount my suspension to. Not the suspension, the uh, gearbox. And I've got to say, the uh, visuals of editing a hull, you can see the lines much clearer between selecting faces. And if you go into edges, edges work flawlessly and the edges were previously an absolute nightmare so you know we've lost a lot in this update and i i i sympathize with the people who are going to be upset with that because you know we ultimately we don't have our designs that we've been working on in this update yet and there's going to be a lot of things that people want that aren't here and i understand if you don't want to use this update but I think what we should really appreciate is that the time was spent in this update before it became a problem. You know, it, it was clear to Hamish that the work needed to be done and the work has been done. And I'm really feeling that polish coming into play here. Uh, so I'm super, super happy that uh, it's come out like this because it's feeling vastly improved just to like build this simple little hull right now. So I'm hoping you guys agree with me here. Uh, but so far, so good. We're going to keep working on this hull and hopefully uh, like it's looking a little bit funky at the moment. Hopefully we can get that working properly. 
uh, one thing I am noticing is uh, Control D, which is the shortcut to turn on and off the rotation step, doesn't work at the moment, which is unfortunate because I use that a lot, but that's, uh, you know, that's the kind of teething problems you can expect from an update like this, so uh, I'm gonna consider this a report of that bug, <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll just move on from that one. Man, it feels like we're already a long way into this video, and uh, normally we would be done with the tank by now, but we've barely got a, a general shape for the hull, which can give you a bit of an idea of how long sometimes I will spend just learning new things in these kind of games, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, this this took a long while to uh, get used to for the first time, and uh, uh, also, I was so focused on just, like, learning the game, I didn't spend quite as much time thinking about, should I design it that way, really? <laughs> okay, another small thing I'm noticing is uh, I'm trying to select these um, panels on the side here just to uh, tweak them, because Fender Auto Generation is currently gone, uh, and as you can see, as I hover over them, it's kind of selecting the tracks in the background, and sometimes the chassis of the tank so the selection of parts can be a little funky but i'm getting used to it it's it's not too awful it's just a little quirky so yeah now we get a we get a pretty big building segment here because this was really me going from uh that issue which I was noticing to just like the hull pretty much done without encountering any problems with the system. So it, this was like a smooth 25 minute segment of building and given that this is the first day that this update is in its alpha, uh, now yeah this is a pre-release of an update. That's that's how big of a change this is. This isn't like a pre-release game, this is a pre-release of an update. So you can imagine there's gonna be a little bit of teething problems as I keep saying. Uh, so for me to get as much as 25 minutes on the very first day with literally, like, no complaints, not even bugs, just, like, things that I think are slightly off, it, that, that's a good sign. And uh, I'm really hoping that you guys find the same kind of experience because this, could, this is going to be great, I think. This is going to be really good. Uh, I'm super excited for when we actually get fighting as well. I think the reason that that's not in currently is the damage model isn't done, uh, but I would imagine... That is a somewhat high priority. Obviously, uh, like, the biggest pressing bugs and the actual building of your tank is going to be a bigger priority uh, than that. But, uh, you know, getting the damage model in is definitely going to be quite high on that list before any new features get added, I imagine. So, uh, hopefully, uh, we won't have to wait <laughs> quite as long as we did for this update to come out, for that <laughs> update to this update to come out. But, uh, you know. I jest, I jest. <laughs> okay, so we got a bit of a hull going on here. It's fairly simplistic as things go. Uh, however, this is uh, kind of, you know, it feels lacking, I think, because it needs rivets with this kind of construction. Uh, and rivets currently aren't a thing in this version of the game, uh, just because I believe it's being replaced with a little bit more of a... Uh, a little bit of a more robust system uh, for riveting stuff. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that'll be back and better soon. But uh, overall, this was a really pleasurable experience building this, to be entirely honest. I've had a good time, uh, and hopefully that will carry on as I put on a turret, because we're going to try and cut a hole in this and uh, fit a turret basket on this thing. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, one thing I have done is here on the front, you can just about see here, there's weld lines. So this is the front armor thickness here is 60 millimeters thick, and that is visually represented on the top, and that's... Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, I'm in love with you. Uh, I, I, I didn't realize I wasn't recording. So, uh, what I did while you were away, I used the uh, circle tool here to create a hole in a face, which, as you can see there, it's worked great. Uh, in this case, it didn't work great. So you might see that all of these faces are horrifically messed up. Uh, I've had to go and manually redo this entire circle, basically. So uh, that tool needs a little bit more time in the oven, um, but uh, yeah, it, it's there. And uh, I'm sure if you know exactly how to make it work, it does work. But now we can go ahead and we can put a turret basket on this thing. So I have put a couple crew members in just to kind of demonstrate where my driver and my machine gun are going to go. So hopefully this turret basket doesn't completely destroy them. And as you can see, 
Uh, this turret basket sits nicely in the hole here, and when it's in a valid location, it's glowing yellow, which looks pretty good to me. Uh, and if we clip ourselves inside here, these fellas, I mean, they're currently a little bit cramped in there, but we do have enough room on this turret basket uh, in order to uh, kind of extend this down and not get too much in their way. We can even give them just a little bit more room here by dragging them back. Uh, the fenders are slightly clipping through, but they, more importantly, haven't... They, they haven't got any body parts clipping in. <laughs> so now we can uh, use this to turn this guy on. To turn this guy on? No, that's not what I meant to say. Uh, to <laughs> make this guy the steering wheel operator. So I believe there's a way that you can actually drag uh, body parts for this guy. And I should probably turn on the uh, <laughs> internals mode rather than trying to clip my camera in here. I forget that we have that now. Uh, so how do you do this, I wonder? And unfortunately, that question is going to remain a mystery. Uh, I couldn't work it out. I don't know if that's not a thing and I'm just going completely insane. Uh, maybe it's been removed for this alpha and I saw it before, or maybe it just never existed. I don't really know. Um, so I ended up just using these sliders to tweak where this guy's arm, arms and legs could go. And eventually, uh, after a little bit of playing around, I did get him in a position which I didn't think was too ridiculous. Uh, I'm kind of benefited in this tank. It, it is quite a cramped vehicle, but there's very little armor, so I don't have to contest with that too badly, because that is something you have to consider now with this Geometric Internals update, which is cool. Okay, there we go. So, uh, I've been wiggling around with these sliders, and now this dude is holding on to his little steering wheel. It's a little bit tight for the uh, turret basket behind here, but uh, that's not the end of the world, I don't think. And I believe you can actually slightly reduce the diameter here using this slider. So we can make this turret basket a little bit less intrusive on these guys if we would like to, and that's probably a good idea. <laughs> And now we can spend a little bit of time getting this turret to look right. Uh, so we're going to pop this back into freeform uh, and I will just decorate this up for you. So yay, another time-lapse section. Are you are you enjoying the time-lapse sections or are you enjoying the uh, non-time-lapse sections more? Who knows? <laughs> We'll have to find out based on uh, which parts of the videos people are watching the most, but yeah. This is uh, going to be fairly familiar to the old version. This this bit where you're just generally shaping the vehicle is extremely similar to how it was already working. So if you were worried that you'll like lose skill in building, then you shouldn't. Um, the the obviously you're gonna have to build with the considerations of your crew now, but that doesn't really change the fact that most people I feel like who can already build well will be able to factor that into their builds without too much trouble so yeah it should be good and uh i'm just in terms of visual styles for what's going on here uh, i'm kind of thinking obviously you can probably tell by the hull but panzer 38t uh, kind of ends up looking a little bit more landsverk l60 though so yeah let me know what you think about the actual design of this thing because it is a bit odd Okay, so I got a bit of a shape for a turret going on here, and uh, currently there's only one mantler is something I've noticed. So we'll have to see if that gets changed fairly soon, and uh, I'm going to have to have a play around, see if custom mantlets are possible as well. But uh, at the moment, you can kind of uh, move this plate separately to this back part, so... Um, it's interesting. I'm going to see how this, uh, how this develops, I guess, and uh, hopefully... I can still get custom mantlets going because that's going to give me a lot more freedom for uh, playing around with cool things. Okay, so this is uh, a really cool part actually, so I'm going to make sure that I show this. So uh, we've now got to connect our cannon onto our mantlet manually. So we're going to try and get it central here. And you can see that we actually have a mantlet piece. So we can drag this back into the tank 
from the mantlet and we have this uh, caliber slider as per usual so we're going to bring it down all the way down we're going to go 47 millimeter gun and we're going to have a propellant length of let's say 450 seems like a reasonable enough length and you can see that's changing the size of our mantlet back here which is super cool uh, and then we have a choice of how many recoil segments we want uh, which is going to be the length of our barrel now I don't know whether we can oh we can okay so we can we can select these parts individually and we can adjust the length of these so let's make this starting one quite a lot thicker so that it doesn't look so weird on the gun uh, and I'm going to play around with this until I'm happy and then I'll show you the final result here Okay, I'm fairly happy with that gun. I don't think that's too bad at all. Uh, and then we're going to put a cupola on top. And I believe this is the uh, accurate cupola for the uh, Panzer 38T, which is kind of what we've based this on, though. It's ended up looking a little bit more like, uh, like a Landswerk design from Sweden, to be entirely honest. <laughs> and now we have to work out how our people are going to sit inside of this here turret, which could be... Uh, could be a challenge, but uh, I'd like two crew members, I think. Hey, what are you watching on YouTube today? Oh, I'm watching my favorite YouTuber Patchbits play human Tetris with a tank. That is something you can actually say now. <laughs> Here's the the next minute and a half is genuinely human Tetris. This is so fun. I, I, I it's probably not what you were expecting me to say because it feels like I was about to complain. <laughs> Genuinely, this is a blast, and I I strongly suggest if you haven't played it yet, get on Sprocket and have a go. Just trying to fit crew members into a tight space because there's there's a lot of fun to be had in just like turning them around, rotating them, and just being like, just turn your upper body, and then there's that entire space behind the gun where you've got to have their arms like weirdly clipped in. <laughs> so much fun uh this this was by far and away my favorite part of building this tank and uh <laughs> it's just it's just great honestly i i i feel like i'm just gushing at this point and i am but i, I can't recommend it enough <laughs> we need names for these guys as well i need to start naming each of my crew members okay this was actually really really challenging to uh squeeze these guys in here so there's not a lot of room it looks like a lot of room but there's not a lot of room because you've got to have this whole area clear let's move this guy closer to the gun you can see we've got to have this area here clear so you can't have arms you can't have legs in there similarly uh you can't have like your torso clipping into the edge here so there's actually there's there's quite a small amount of space and there's not enough room in this turret to sit down so they've got to stand in the turret basket this is a challenge to properly tetris them in here and i, I really like it. it it's a good fun little challenge and i strongly recommend you give it a go yourself <clears throat> okay now what we got to do is fit in our two gearboxes here so these uh because this is a twin clutch transmission we're gonna have to fit two of these things in here uh, and i'm not entirely sure what settings i should have on this uh so i'm gonna try and hopefully use uh the sprocket tools github io Thing to uh, <laughs> hopefully provide us a little bit of insight in whether we can, uh, yeah, move quickly. And now we can forget human Tetris. It's time for mildly cursed <laughs> gearbox geometry Tetris. Uh, this is also good fun. Um, I didn't have too many issues because the engine in this is quite small. Uh, I feel like some of you are going to want to make some mad powerful tanks with mad gearboxes. So this may be a little bit more of a challenge for that. <laughs> Okay, so I've maneuvered my gearbox and drive shafts to look a little bit more like this. So hopefully now we can fit in some proper gearboxes because previously they were a little bit weedy. Uh, this just kind of roots everything around the engine and gives us space to work with. So hopefully this will be all right. <laughs> Okay, so gearbox is in. Now that looks a very, very weedy gearbox. So we're going to have to see if this actually plays ball anymore or if gearboxes 
are slightly different now. <laughs> uh, but as you can see, also up here, uh, I've added some ammo racks. Uh, I don't see a way to designate whether this is um, HE or uh, AP. So maybe that's currently not there. Uh, we'll just add a hull rack so you can see how cool it is actually adding these ammo racks now. So now if we just pick our ammo, you can see it works exactly the way it did before, but as you, as you can clearly tell, there's actual models for your ammo now, uh, and that's just, just so much fun. <laughs> and we're even going to add a rack here in our basket at their feet. <laughs> Hope this one doesn't get hit, lads. Otherwise, you are going up in smoke. But, uh, you know, it's like a little quick restore of your um, ammo and your turret, just in case you're running low. <laughs> Loads of ammo going on in this thing. Crazy ammo. <laughs> we can also add a fuel tank, which we have a nice space for just in between the ammo racks. Uh, we're just going to have to move it slightly up uh, so that we can avoid the trans... Uh, sorry, suspension arms, not transmission arms. Uh, we're actually going to move this ammo up as well uh, so that that's a little bit easier to access from your turret basket. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a massive fuel tank. Uh, we can even make it a little bit bigger. There's no, no huge downside to that because you can actually cram quite a lot in your tank is something that I'm learning. So uh, I think... We, I think we're probably approaching a working tank here. I, there's, there's almost certainly going to be something I've forgotten, but this feels quite good. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's not pretty. I'll level with you. There's no smoothing for turrets at the moment. If you're wondering why there's this uh, weird jaggedy turret, but uh, yeah, I think we're getting there. We're going to apply a paint scheme. I got a couple of uh, custom ones. One thing that's really cool about these turrets is I wanted to add this little bit of metal down here, which requires me to raise the turret up a little bit more. Uh, but uh, if you want to move your turret in the older versions, you have to kind of manually adjust all of the points. In this, it just does everything for you, which is super nice. And so we have this kind of neat looking tank going on uh, now I don't know if there's any other maps other than the flat sandbox I don't believe there is for us to test this on uh, but we can we can still have a little drive around in it and hopefully uh, fire a couple shots off and see what kind of a tank have we built and uh, yeah I mean I, I think we're really really close to being there one thing that is improved is I believe uh, decals now place as like this kind of 3D object, so if we take a, uh, let's just take any old thing, why not this? Uh, if we take this, previously what this would do is if it was angled kind of like this, it would apply to everything in front of it. Now it only applies to the depth that you assign, so hopefully you understand what I'm trying to show from this. This is going to be amazing for those of you who really like applying a lot of decals to your tanks uh, and hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier for me to get involved with doing that as well because it's something that I really want to do uh, and I know for a fact that a lot of you are going to be doing um, rivets using these so uh, <laughs> I can't wait to see what some of you guys are going to be working on. I'm going to have to check the uh, discord as this video is getting uploaded just to uh, have a look, see what you guys are doing because it'll, it'll be crazy. It'll always is. So without any further ado, here is our tank. The turret traverse is lacking, so I, I didn't clearly find the uh, traverse settings. It's the acceleration is awful. The actual top speed of it isn't too bad. And the mobility of the tank, I mean, it's not awful. The turning leaves perhaps a little bit to be desired, but not too much. And uh, in terms of look, it's it looks, it's definitely not the prettiest tank I've ever built. Suspension clearly isn't very good either, but uh, oh well, that's fine. Uh, the gun, yeah, that works, and it's, uh, oh, so he's, okay, so you've got a crew member swapping to reloading position, then loading the shell, then swapping back to gunner, and then, ah, okay, we can, we can fix that, we can fix that.
Okay, so now in order to change your traverse mode, you actually have to select this part here, and we got loads of room to change this thing about. So we're going to increase our uh, torque by quite a bit. Let's go to there roughly and change up that. So we've got about 12 degrees a second with a pretty good acceleration. That should be a lot better. And then there's also going to be a vertical laying drive, which I'm going to try and find where that is. Oh, there it is. It's this box here. I that was <laughs> that was really easy to find. Okay, uh, we'll up the torque on that one as well. Change the ratio so that it's a little bit faster. Uh, depression. Ooh, look at that. That's uh, that's not too bad there. Eleven degrees, and uh, that's actually believable as well because otherwise it'd be clipping with our boys. We can get twenty-one degrees of uh, elevation in this thing as well. That's that's not bad actually. I feel like this would do quite well if we were given the. Uh, early war uh, missions to do, I guess. Maybe we can try and work out how to fix the suspension as well. <laughs> there we go. We've got a little bit more damping, uh, well, less damping now, so it's a little softer, hopefully a little bit smoother of a ride, and can we reload and fire? Yes, simultaneously. We don't have to swap the crew member over. That makes a lot more sense, and that makes a much better tank. I I'm really, really happy with this. Uh, this has been a great breath of fresh air for designing a sprocket tank because, to be honest, it was getting a little bit stale. I, I seriously, I cannot wait. Uh, it's a little bit narrow, isn't it? <laughs> Could have done with making this tank wider. Um, I, I cannot wait to uh, get my teeth stuck into this a little bit more when I've got a little bit more time. Uh, apologies that this is a little bit of a weird episode. Things will get back to normal. It's just that I have been absolutely rammed and I really wanted to get this thing out today. So uh, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching. Uh, and yeah, come back next time because we're going to be doing a lot more with this uh, <laughs> with this version of the game. And I hope, I hope you're as excited as I am because uh, this is going to be cool. <laughs> hey, it looks pretty good from this angle. But yeah, anyway, uh, if you did enjoy this one, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the future. Goodbye! And as always, a huge thank you to this channel's patrons, Ambrose, Chemgen 135, Cody Yen, Digi Pete, Skavunga, Master 929, Sad Cat, Jack Not Engra, Jessica Casual, T6 and One, Last Legend 11, Mildly Investor, Nicholas K, Relax, Panda, Rossel's Bakken, Ryan Brody, Ryan Brody, Stug Tree, Terra, The Kinesian Emperor, Worth Sickle, Zerashime, and Zeitwolverine. Thank you so much for your support.